Now, at this moment, please join me in giving a warm welcome to our final awardee of the evening. He is a, st he is a distinguished member of the U.S. Senate, currently serving as the Majority Whip for the Senate Republican Conference. As a son of a World War II veteran, he has established himself as a champion for veterans who have bravely served their country and all active military personnel, especially those who hail from my home state of Texas. Yeah. As long as it's not the Longhorns. Aggies. Aggies. Gig them. Okay, people, focus. <laughs> he is dedicated to ensuring that all our men and women in uniform, past and present, are afforded the necessary tools and care and benefits that they deserve. That's called veterans benefits, and our veterans deserve everything that they're entitled to. Everything that they're entitled to. He has worked tirelessly to address veterans of fair backlog and ensure that all Texas veterans, including those in underserved, largely Latino communities, have equal access to a full range of services provided by the Veterans Affairs, including inpatient health care facilities. I am honored here to present the LULAC Legislative Award to the senior senator of Texas, the Honorable John Cornyn. <laughs> Good evening, it's good to be with you today, tonight. And Roger, thank you very much for this special honor and a very nice award. I've worked with LULAC for quite a few years now. Actually, the first award I received from LULAC, I was honored to receive, was as Attorney General of Texas. When it came to my attention that six death penalty cases depended upon the testimony of a psychiatrist, or psychologist, I should say, who testified that Hispanics and African Americans, because they were disproportionately represented in the prison population, were more likely to commit future crimes of violence. And those of you who are lawyers in the group know that that's the predicate for death penalty cases. I was shocked when I found that out, and we filed pleadings before the United States Supreme Court saying that this death penalty should not stand and that case had to be retried without that offensive testimony. Because in the United States of America, no person should be punished based on testimony because of their race or ethnicity. So I was very proud. to receive that, that award and from LULAC. But I have to tell you, I'm a little biased about LULAC because uh, of great Texans like uh, Roger Roca and so many others who are represented here today. I've had the chance to work with a number of uh, the leaders of LULAC, people like Margaret Moran and my friend Hector Flores from Dallas, Renee and B. Martinez and Ray Mancera from El Paso. We have a lot of wonderful leaders a lot of wonderful Texans who have been leaders of LULAC. And I think one of the great things about LULAC is this is one of those rare organizations that tries to find common bonds to unite people behind a common cause. And I say that tonight because I think tonight's program underscores that point. It's fair to say that uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren and I share some different views about a number of topics. But for me, it's about something I learned when I came to the Senate from the liberal lion of the Senate, Teddy Kennedy at the time, who I served with, working along with a, a very conservative member of the Senate, Mike Enzi from Wyoming. And I asked him, I said, how is it that people so ideologically different can work together so productively? And they said, it's easy. It's the 80-20 rule. 
the 80-20 rule. We focus on the things we can agree on and we try to make progress there and we leave the fights over the 20% for another day and another time. So to me, that was an important lesson and one of the most important lessons I've learned here in Washington is the only way you get anything done is to work on a bipartisan basis to try to find that common ground applying the 80-20 rule. And I'm happy to tell you that we've, amidst the polarizing politics in Washington, D.C., that no doubt you are read about all the time and you see on television, there actually is some good bipartisan work being done. For example, on the Every Student Succeeds Act, this is the successor to No Child Left Behind. And it really represents a remarkable coming together of people of different points of view to try to come up with a, a plan and legislation that best suits the needs of our children in the 21st century. We know the work world is much different and that children need to have a number of choices across a variety of opportunities, whether it's a four-year college, whether it's a, a certificate or a junior college degree, which will allow them to become a certified welder or some other trade. Uh, children need all the choices that we can give them uh, so they can decide, along with their parents, uh, what they think the best way forward for them is. During that legislation, I worked with Senator Mark Warner from, uh, from Virginia to insert a provision to help non-native English speakers and their families learn English. It seems pretty obvious, but it will make it more resources available, more translators and interpreters to help non-English speakers learn English as part of their education. And it's all really about expanding opportunity for success. We've also, I've also introduced legislation working with my colleagues in the Senate on a bill called the Minority Serving Institution Fairness Act, which will allow minority serving institutions to more fairly compete for multiple grants that are provided by the federal government to improve education across the board instead of focusing on only one student group. And while no doubt you've read, you've, you read and you hear a lot about Republicans and Democrats fighting like cats and dogs in Washington, D.C., I assure you that there, are, there is common ground on things like criminal justice reform, for example. I happened to receive a phone call from this gentleman who works at, at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, known as President Barack Obama, yesterday, talking about how we can work to make our criminal justice system both more fair and more effective when it comes to rehabilitating people who've made mistakes but want to learn to live a life productively on the outside. It's an important thing for us to work on together. And then also the fact that, uh, thank you. And on a related but slightly different topic, I happen to be a, among a number of large major county um, sheriffs here in Washington, D.C. recently. And one of the sheriffs from my hometown, San Antonio, Texas, said, you want to meet the largest mental health provider in America? Meet the sheriff from Los Angeles County. It was kind of hit me like a, like a wet rag. But the fact is that so many people suffering from mental illness are populating our jails or living on our streets. And they need access to health care. So in short, what I share with LULAC and with each of you is a desire to make sure that all of our people, everyone who lives in this great, wonderful, generous country of ours, has an equal opportunity to pursue their dreams. I know it's uh, something that LULAC works for every day. I'm glad to join you in that effort. And I'm convinced that LULAC's future remains bright indeed and look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you, God bless you, have a good evening.